This is the biggest North London derby in many, many years, maybe in modern history, and it's one of the biggest games for Mick Arteta ever. It's a huge opportunity in the North London derby for Arsenal to put massive pressure in the Premier League title race, uh, and really it represents the last big hurdle for Arsenal, and there they can kind of wait and look for Man City to obviously play a very similar game in a few weeks against Spurs, where City have never won, and obviously uh, City have some difficult games as well coming up, but it's getting tight, it's getting ridiculously fine in the final few weeks of the season. In this video, we're going to break down where I think the game will go, uh, and why I think Arsenal are in a massively uh, strong position going into this game, in my opinion. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe really appreciate it let's just talk about the overview of where the North London derby sits at the moment we've got one side the Lily Whites doing unbelievably well they've scored 65 goals I think so far in the league their home form is actually really good only lost four games at home I think it is under Andrew Postacoglu um, and I think they've been fantastic in the league you've got to look at the you've got to look at sort of the standard of where Tottenham are as a club They've got to be trying to get back into the Champions League. They've got to be building a foundation where Ange Postecoglou can kind of punch a little bit heavier season on season. They've got an advantage, in my opinion, on the likes of Chelsea, on the on the likes of Manchester United. Maybe not in terms of pedigree, in terms of guaranteed success, but in terms of building up a platform where they want to go. I think they are leaps and bounds ahead of those other those other guys. The likes of you know, Mickey van der Ven. Uh, James Madison, uh, Vicario, Udogi, who won't be featuring in the North London Derby because of injuries. Pedro Porro, probably the two best set of fullbacks in the league this season. Spurs are in a very, very good position. So it's not like Arsenal going to Tottenham Hotspur thinking this is a rubbish Tottenham side, they're scrapping for Europe or whatever. This is a very commanding Spurs side that have been at points. Yeah, uh, you know, last week, we'll talk about it in a minute. Last week against Newcastle got absolutely decimated and there's a lot of joy for Arsenal and how Spurs lost that game. Uh, it was woeful. But Spurs, when they've been good, have been really good. They've been scintillating. They've been one of the best sides for me to watch uh, in all of sort of Europe in terms of football that I watch. Spurs are right up there for entertainment and for how fast-paced they play. And it's very, very exciting with Ange Postecoglou, despite what I thought at the start of the season. So Arsenal go there. It's going to be hard. But then you've got to factor in. It's almost, it's almost like it's the rock versus an immovable object kind of discussion. Because on one hand, you've got the Spurs that are so free-flowing. They play with a freedom. And then you've got a, a defensive record in Arsenal away from home in the Premier League. We know we can't, that, that kind of changed with Bayern Munich. But with the Premier League away record for Arsenal in the last six weeks, uh, 12 weeks, absolutely imperious defensively. The likes of Ben White, I think, have been completely underrated. Saliba and Gabriel as well. Um, but in, in my opinion, Ben White is the one that stands out for being the most consistent for me. Absolutely superb. And this Arsenal site, when Urien Timber comes back next season, there'll be a whole different proposition. They've got to go out and get Alexander Izak in a big big way but maybe I should do a video about transfer discussions later on in the calendar year but we have to talk about Alexander Izak he absolutely dominated the Spurs back line he made Mickey van der Ven do somersaults like he was doing GCC PE and um, not that I did that well I did I've got to be in it Izak absolutely ran right against the Spurs back line Arsenal can take a lot of credit from uh, or experience from from that game and see how can we do that against Spurs the big one is is that ball over the top despite having Pedro Porro and Udogi in the game uh, a lot of pace in terms of covering pace behind uh, the ball over the top for Newcastle is almost route one it was almost uh, Robert Hoof-esque just lumping it and see what happens and Newcastle broke time and time again. Gordon was having a field day. Izak was having a field day. So Arsenal absolutely will have to go into the game thinking, can we turn over possession quickly in midfield? Uh, we'll talk about who I want to start in midfield for Arsenal uh, if I was Mikel Arteta. Turn over the ball quickly and fire that ball around the corner, just like Odegaard did against uh, Chelsea very, very successfully as well. Um, that's how I think Arsenal have to view it, is, is this kind of counter-attacking, high-press system where you win the ball early and you whip it around the corner and try and create space. The big one for Spurs will be Ben Davies at left-back because he is limited in terms of physicality. He's a very decent centre-back, well, centre-back, left-back. He'll be a decent left-back um, in the game, but you can always exploit him. And this is a ma massive opportunity for, for Saka, in my opinion. So much pace when he wants to use it. I think a lot of time he is being coached to come inside. He's expected to be the number one goal threat for Arsenal these days. But sometimes I don't see enough of Saka burning people on his right foot and taking it down the byline. And that's where I think Arsenal will have a lot of joy, mark my words. 
Uh, on the left, we have to talk about Trossard, who's been absolutely exceptional, superb uh, against Chelsea, and actually decent in the Bayern Munich games, really. For a player that costs £20 million, he's an absolute bargain, an absolute steal. He's come into his own this season. I think he's been fantastic. Um, and I think he's got to be playing in this game. I'm not sure about Martinelli's fitness. He's not looked fit to me when he has played. I think maybe he got rushed back a little bit for his Bayern Munich games. He looks a little bit rusty, in my opinion. And he's definitely low on confidence. I think Trossard, Havertz, and Saka is the front three for Arsenal from now until the end of the season. Only a few games left. You don't have to be trying things week in, week out. There's nothing to rotate for. Um, and, and there's only sort of one game every three days now, all in the same competition. I think Mikel Arteta will be looking at rhythm. He'll be looking at tr trying to create a strategy for the next few games to put as much... Uh, uh, Minimise as much risk going into into Arsenal games as possible and just keep the flow, keep it going in that regard. The big one for me is Thomas Partey. A million percent plays against Tottenham in this game for me. Should be starting in midfield at the base of midfield. Allow Declan Rice and Odegaard to get forward. Uh, Declan Rice offers that great press, that great energy in midfield. And obviously Odegaard has a little bit something special on the ball as well. Thomas Partey, I don't know if you remember the, the uh, almost goal last season when he hits the crossbar from a volley. It would have been goal of the season instantly. It was an unbelievable strike. Um, and Arsenal have to take a lot of credit from the game this time last year almost because uh, it was at the turn of last year. Very, very dominant performance. It was a, a Lloris shocker that gave Arsenal a win. Um, so obviously Spurs are stronger in that department with Vicario. But I think Arsenal can be going into this game massively, massively confident. I have to talk about, I talk about the back four. Because, look, we all know it's going to be Saliba at Gabriel. Um, Urien Timber, does he get minutes in this game? He obviously came back uh, in an under-21 game and scored an unbelievable goal. If you've not seen that, make sure you check it out. Um, but the, the right-back situation, obviously, with Ben White, they look absolutely solid, uh, in my opinion, for Arsenal for a long, long time now. I think Ben White has been absolutely superb. And the way he was bullying the Chelsea back line, especially on those corners, it was, it was a bit embarrassing, really. Um, it was a little bit embarrassing the front three of Sun Madison Richarlison will have a lot of pace a lot of creativity a lot of ingenuity um, mobility for Arsenal to contend with um, so for me it's going to be a massive opportunity for Tommy Asu who I like a lot between him and Kirill uh, I think there's a world Kirill starts this game as well um, but the left back situation for both clubs will be an interesting one where the likes of Sun and Richarlison will be trying to exploit Tommy Asu like maybe got exploited a little bit against Bayern Munich not massively I think I think he's a decent player but between him and Kirill, they haven't quite nailed that situation down. I don't think Zinchenko starts this game, in my opinion. Um, and I think you want... Uh, for me, personally, if I was Arteta, I'd want Kirill to start left-back. I'd prefer him. I think he's a little bit quicker than Tommy Asu. Maybe Tommy Asu offers a little bit more going forward and his link-up plays a lot better. Um, but all in all, I'm very bullish on an Arsenal win. I think we can put massive, massive pressure on City. You obviously play Nottingham Forest in the evening of the day. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be reacting to all the games this weekend. Absolutely huge. Uh, I'll see you very, very soon.